fellow parliamentarians, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us remember where they were a year ago. Some of us met that day. In this room, as Russian missiles rained on Ukrainian cities and military columns poured across Ukraine's border, we are still gripped by the shock of the aggression. We remember the emotion we felt when our dear colleague, Mikita Potoraev, left these halls to return to Kiev and fight. We, we did not know whether we would see him again or not. This year, he is here in Vienna. He is with us, even if he is not in the meeting room. But a year later, we are here. And a year later, Ukraine stands resilient, strong, and free. With each passing hour, we hope to come closer to the day when the people of Ukraine will enjoy their full independence and sovereignty within their international recognized borders. But each passing hour also brings countless of victims from the soldiers defending their homeland, from those who are taking care of the homes, for those who are providing health care, for those who are taking care about all the other social duties that are to be performed in a country as well as in Ukraine. And their sacrifice calls on us to redouble our efforts to guarantee the right of all Ukrainians to live in peace and dignity. Dear members, dear members of parliament, we have been steadfast in our support for Ukraine since the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014. We have never shied away from denouncing the Russian Federation's clear, gross, and uncorrected violation of the Helsinki Final Act. Our political position is clear. Today's debate should serve to further reaffirm it. But it's also clear that we all wish to go beyond mere experience of solidarity. We want to act decisively in support of Ukraine. Many of us have done so in our national parliament, in our constituency. But we do also want to use the OSCE PA platform to do even more. We must fully utilize the assembly as a common platform to gather support for Ukraine while jointly calling out the Russian Federation's violations of OSCE commitments, the UN Charter and international law. However, we must remain realistic about what we as the Parliamentarian Assembly can do and can't do. We should always consider where and when the OSCE PA is best place to advance security. And we must remain, remain conscious of our limits, but also of our possibility. And I think our possibility is the most important thing. And also that we stay united. The unity we have here in our room, in our support of Ukraine, this is a fantastic tool to strive forward for peace inside OSCE region and a peace based on Ukraine's will and Ukraine's demands and support of their sovereignty. In line with our commitments, and capabilities I have developed for the past year an action plan on Ukraine, which outlines what message we can amplify, what activities we can undertake, and how together we can translate our solidarity into concrete actions. This plan is well complemented by the joint statement of action proposed by Vice President Senator Roger Wicker. This statement was shared with you ahead of our winter meeting. It was endorsed by our bureau on Wednesday, and I 
expect our debates to also signal overwhelming support for this document. Dear colleagues, the challenge brought to the fore by the Russian war in Ukraine are endless. Russia has shattered European security. We must think about how we can put these broken pieces back together. I look forward to the result of the ministerial meeting taking place today in New York, where also OSCE chairperson in office take part as well as secretary general of OSCE governmental side. To have the greatest impact, we must continue coordinating closely with our governments and international parliaments. Together, we can ensure that the Russian Federation is held accountable for the atrocities in the war against Ukraine, that war crimes are fully investigated, and that reparations compensate for the incalculable damage caused by the war. In our respective parliaments, we have to call attention to and hold the Russian Federation accountable for the abduction of Ukrainian children. Justice has to be delivered to the victims of the war. Away from the battlefield, there are many issues to tackle today, from welcoming refugees to preventing illegal deportation, from ensuring energy security to preventing global hunger, and to support continued efforts to reinforce democratic governance and the rule of law. On all of these issues, OSCE and the Parliamentary Assembly must continue to seek ways to reaffirm our support for Ukraine. This is where our energy must be directed. Thank you.